Hey everyone, we're back with a brand new video about that show about survivors and the zombies that love them, The Walking Dead. Warning, beyond this point there are spoilers for people who are not up to date in AMC's The Walking Dead television universe as well as the Image comic book series. In this video we're going to give you our binge breakdown of the brand new full length Comic Con trailer for The Walking Dead Season 11A. We're going to go over premiere dates and every other piece of info we know about the rapidly approaching farewell season. Finally we're going to speculate on who might be next to die in the world of The Walking Dead because there's almost Almost nobody left to kill. Before we get into our video, we just want to thank anyone that's still tuning into our content as we're coming off another very long hiatus in between videos. We were forced to upgrade our studio back in the early spring due to some serious technical difficulties, but we have finally become operational again along with a second backup system. We hope to be able to give you more TWD spoilers and breakdowns on a regular basis for the entire final season. We thank you for all your patience and sticking with our channel through the down times and slow times and hope you'll stick around to watch us grow for years to come beyond even The Walking Dead. Now let's get into our binge breakdown of the Season 11A trailer just released at this year's virtual San Diego Comic Con. The first set of shots might give you a little bit of apocalyptic deja vu as Negan and Father Gabe are once again trapped in a small confined space surrounded by a herd of walkers. However, apparently this time the duo is underground on a mission in a subway tunnel, but we'll cover that more in the episode descriptions later. The big question here is how will Negan react to Gabriel's new stab them first and ask questions later kind of outlook on life? Also, what are the bad memories Negan is brooding about? What is it? Bad memories. Could it be the time Jadis almost had him bitten and kidnapped by a creepy helicopter? Will these two bond over their shared experience? After the brief exchange between the gym coach and the preacher, an AMC title card splashes in with a rando walker hand for added effect. The next shot shows a distant perspective of a war-torn Alexandria slowly being rebuilt. It appears to be Magna sitting down as a red shirt walks by. After that, the trailer cuts to an over-the-shoulder shot of two survivors, possibly Kelly and Lydia, watching some horses run by. Is this on some ranch, or have these horses escaped or been set free? We'll get back to the horses later on in the trailer. The following set of shots takes place underground once again, which makes us think that the majority of the footage we are seeing will be from the first two episodes. It's hard to make out the sign, but it appears to say East M.A. something. What subway station do you think this could be? There's an Eastern Market subway station in D.C., but who knows? How far have the survivors strayed from Alexandria? Are they back in D.C.? After that, we get a shot that makes the regular apocalypse look like a Sunday picnic as Daryl surveys a desolate landscape. Could this be after some battle, or the calm before another storm, like back when the communities first had beef with the Whisperers? The following shot is a little scary as usually badass Judith Grimes looks visibly shaken. As the dialogue in the trailer turns up its intensity, the trailer cuts the shots of first Magna, Kelly, Rosita, and Carol, then Lydia, Carol, Aaron, and Jerry. There's definitely a good amount of Jerry in this trailer, which we love. The next shot shows us a filthy Daryl with an indecipherable look on his face. He could be thinking about murder or breakfast, no way to tell. After that, we go back to Team Carol with Magna and Kelly and company as they come across a horse's head. Is this proof that the Godfather survived the apocalypse? That leads us to believe the shot earlier was one of the horses being let free by an enemy force, possibly a reaper. Or maybe this is the horse that screwed Rick over back in Season 9. This next shot is also kind of scary as Rosita comes home and it appears the doorways have been somewhat barricaded as Diane and maybe Lydia let her in. Is this in response to a herd of walkers or a reaper attack? It seems that Rosita has been out fighting, but the look on her face seems to tell us that something inside has gone wrong. Nobody had better have touched a hair on baby Coco's head. The next shot shows water spraying at the camera as a walker passes by. Is it possible the water tower has sprung a leak or been shot? Could this be a part of a coordinated reaper attack? The little we know about the reapers, it's hard to say, but they are definitely capable of advanced, devastating tactics that a battered group of survivors just coming out of a whisperer war are not ready for. Thanks a lot, Maggie. 
The next shot shows Aaron using his mace arm to brain a walker at the hilltop. After that, we get the first confirmation of some kind of season 11 death or dismemberment as someone gets a hardcore walker bite on his forearm. Who could this be? Alden or Cole maybe or Luke? Chances are this is another red shirt, but this being the final season, anyone can get it. After that is a new shot of a tired looking Carol as she fires an arrow into a walker skull. Let's take note of the military clothing and the helicopter tail in the background, which matches other shots from previous promos that tell us the survivors are on some sort of military base. The following shot is just awkward at level 1000. Negan is pulling a screaming Maggie away from something. It seems someone Maggie cares about, maybe Cole, Elijah, or even Alden, have been taken down by walkers, and Negan is actually saving Maggie from getting herself killed. But is he really supposed to thank him for that later? Negan really can't win in this situation, and these two characters have already been down this road, so it's a bit repetitive to go back through the will Maggie kill Negan arc once again. The next sequence of shots shows Rosita and Lydia kicking some Walker ass before we get a shot from a different location of Daryl also taking something down. The trailer then cuts to Team Maggie marching through a subway car as Daryl's dialogue talks about never leaving anyone behind, with a shot of Daryl aiming down the sights of his crossbow along with it to accentuate the point. After that, we see Carol in tears and wonder if she is about to say goodbye to an old friend or if she's just about to go off the deep end again. The next shot is just a random, gnarly-looking walker, and then we see Kelly riding a horse in the woods, possibly looking for Connie. The trailer then cuts to Magna talking to Kelly about what happened to Connie, and we do have to point out it's kind of effed up that nobody has found Connie yet. After Kelly looks at a notebook that appears to have belonged to Connie, she looks really bummed out, but then the trailer shows us that Connie is definitely alive and well, along with Virgil running down a dark street. Connie appears to be in some sort of trouble, but still surviving. Will Connie make it back home with Virgil, or will the Reapers catch them? Following that moment, we get brought back to Team Eugene, and the next shot shows us the leader of the Stormtroopers, Mercer, in all his glory. The guy he's talking to could maybe be the soldier that Princess made friends with, or it could be the governor's entitled spoiled son, Sebastian. Hard to tell. After that, we cut to Ezekiel and Princess being marched down a hallway by a few more troopers, but no new story info here. The trailer then cuts to a shot with Aaron, Carol, and Lydia. Lydia passes Aaron a knife, and it seems he might be about to finish off one of their friends turned Walker. The next set of shots jarringly tells us that guns are back like it's season 8 all over again as Maggie loads up an assault rifle and starts using Walker heads for target practice. We once again notice the camo gear here that these Walkers are wearing, which tells us these shots are also from that same mission on the military base. Following that moment, we get a bunch of civilian Walkers outside trying to get inside to someone. The trailer immediately cuts to Alden in a pretty tough fight with a headstrong walker which makes us think he might be the bite victim before cutting away to Father Gabe blasting his holy shotgun and then to Elijah doing some Cobra Kai ninja moves. The trailer then cuts to a shot of a few walkers in some sort of pit or maybe a cave in a Connie flashback before cutting to Aaron's very important question. So... You're leaving to fight ghosts. Who is he talking to and does he mean metaphorical or ghost busting? It seems pretty obvious that he means the Reapers. The next shot is Carol and she's pleading with someone not to go down a path, as if it's the same path that Carol herself has just went down. We believe she is trying to convince Maggie here to not go on a quest for vengeance like she did with Alpha and the Whisperers, but it's anybody's guess. After that, we get a terrifying moment as Dog seems to be with one of the Reapers. They appear to be watching Daryl, which makes us believe what a lot of people have been speculating, that this is Dog's OG owner, Leah. The terror factor doubles down in the next shot as Maggie lights a match to reveal a deadly-looking Reaper right behind her. The trailer then cuts to what appears to be a group of unmasked Reapers and possibly Alden running in the woods. Could the survivors have ambushed the Reapers? Following that moment, the action stays in the woods as Daryl swings at someone before Gabriel does, and then we see a bloody scythe sticking in a tree. Will everyone make it out of this fight alive? We don't think so. Following that moment, the dialogue pumps up the new villains and we get a Reservoir Dog-style shot of a dozen Reapers walking through the woods. 
Is the center guy Pope their leader, or is this just a random Reaper squad? Although nobody has named the actor playing their leader, we believe it is this guy, Richie Coster, who seems like a good fit for the role of a train killer slash religious fanatic. How big is this group? Given some interview comments about them, the Reapers are highly trained killers who sound like Navy SEALs, so maybe they're not a big group like the Whisperers, but more a handful of guys that can do a lot of damage. After a fade to black, the action cuts to who is most likely a reaper, rolling around in the woods with a bloody knife before cutting to a door being kicked open by two armed and somewhat trained guys with guns. The edit implies all of these people are reapers, and we wonder who they're going after. Has Rosita or Lydia been marked like Maggie was? Pope Rock, Jacob. Maggie continues the action in the next shot as she throws a knife at someone before the trailer cuts outside to Jerry doing some spear lunges. He is glorious. Following that moment is another gnarly-looking, pus-filled walker, and then we get a distant shot of Ezekiel fighting off two more of the undead. It's strange that he's with the Commonwealth and doing this. Is he being tested here, or does the group get rejected and sent home? We do hope that the Commonwealth has the ability to heal Ezekiel, who wasn't supposed to survive Season 10. The show did introduce cancer care during the apocalypse via the heartbreaking Here's Negan episode, so maybe that same type of treatment that Negan actually has knowledge about can be applied to the king. Negan, MD? Anyone? Next up, we get a Eugene action shot, and he also seems to be out in the wild. After that, we see three people dragging a prisoner down a hallway. We don't think these are stormtroopers out of uniform, so could they be Reapers or even some of the survivors with a Reaper hostage? But who's under the hood? Are those Daryl's clothes? The next few shots cut to a fire being started at someone's feet before the action cuts to a pretty big reveal. The Reaper who was with Dog definitely seems to be a woman, and by the eyes it looks like this is Daryl's long-lost love, Leah. Is she going to be pissed at him, or will they kiss and make up? Following that moment, we get Maggie talking about what's out there, but with no context, she could mean just about anything. The next two shots are the scariest of the whole trailer. <laughs> Nobody better have hurt Dog in any possible way. Seriously, though, we will riot. After that, we also get a jump scare with Connie, who definitely seems to be being hunted by someone, most likely the Reapers. How did she come across them separate from the other guys? How did nobody ever meet this group until now? Or have they? Can Virgil come through with a save after being such a wimp? During that moment, an unknown voice tells Father Gabriel, Don't be scared. I'm not. Should he be? After all he's been through, he doesn't much seem to care about anything anymore. What about Rosita and Coco? Following that moment, we get a shot of Mercer looking tough with a Commonwealth banner behind him and an Easter egg with some Stormtrooper illustrations directly from the comic books. In this shot, it's hard to make out anything, but it could possibly be Lydia in a dark room. After that, the trailer cuts to a walker that looks like he was on an episode of Pitmasters before cutting to Daryl. Who are the people he's facing? Are those survivors or Reapers? Could the woman up front be Leah? Could Daryl negotiate a peace between everyone? Let's get real, this is The Walking Dead, of course they won't. After that, we get some pretty cool creepy crawler walkers, and we think that Greg Nicotero is going to give us pretty much every zombie he's ever conceived for this final season. Next up, we see Rosita and Carol in some kind of tense situation before the trailer cuts back to whoever our hooded victim is being dragged through some sort of industrial area, which could be the Reaper's base. Following that moment, we see a team of survivors cautiously walking through some sort of open graveyard with bodies wearing camouflage, so most likely part of a scene from the mission that leads the group into the subway tunnels. The trailer then cuts to Connie and Virgil running for their lives, while the dialogue playing during this moment implies Maggie is leading the survivors to their deaths. Next, we see Maggie with a flare in a subway car, and then a set of shots of the Walking Dead's prodigal daughter. Well, will she die after coming back and bringing the Reapers with her? Not likely. After a fade to black, the trailer comes back into Maggie wandering by an old shopping center and then underground with a flashlight. Finally, we see two people carrying someone, but this time the person being carried seems to be someone who was injured, and it appears to be Negan helping them out on the left. What a guy. Next, we hear from Negan, who seems to be defending his actions while we see a shot of Alpha's mask. Is Maggie arguing Alpha should have been allowed to live? Uh, no. After that, we see the consequences of the Whisperer War on the hilltop as Carol and Lydia walk the grounds, but the damage isn't nothing some duct tape and a little elbow grease can't fix. The trailer intensity starts to pick back up again as Carol has an emotionally charged moment with Magna. Is she asking to be forgiven for the whole getting everyone trapped in a cave situation? How about find Connie? 
Next up, we see Ezekiel, who is probably in the same sequence as earlier where he is fighting for his life. Following that moment, we see Judith draw her blade on someone looking very angry. Is this a reaper? Or did someone try to take away Judith's dessert? After that, we see the young Miss Grimes training all the kids, and she's the only one with a real sword. Rick would be proud. And Shane, too. The trailer then cuts to Magna drawing her bow on Kelly and Carol, who are probably out searching for Connie. Why can nobody find her? Following that moment, we get another glorious Jerry action shot as the group runs through Alexandria. It appears that another herd has somehow came through, and the next shot shows us where they're getting in from. Is this sabotage by the Reapers or just bad luck? The next set of shots show Negan braining a walker with a crowbar and then Maggie charging in his direction. Did PTSD kick in for her after seeing Negan bash someone's head in or is this just misleading editing? The following shot shows Negan wanting to defuse the situation as he gives Maggie his gun. After some more shots using guns, it's clear the Walking Dead bullet boycott is over as the team in the subway tunnels kills even more walkers. Next up is a shot we'd never guessed in a million years. A true Maggie and Negan team up. What do you think? Can she ever truly forgive him? After a title card splashes in, we hear from Daryl who implies he'll trust Negan if Maggie says to trust him. Following that moment, we get one teasing a storyline that was very popular in the comics. The Commonwealth has a wall of the missing for people trying to reunite in the apocalypse, and in the comics, Michonne found her long-lost daughter on this wall. In an earlier promo, it was revealed that Yumiko, or Miko, will be getting that storyline with her brother, Tommy. Who will be playing her brother, and will he be an asset against the Reapers? Also, why is Yumiko wearing a Stormtrooper outfit if she will end up a lawyer there? Is this part of an escape attempt that is canceled when she realizes her bro is with the Commonwealth? Following that moment, the action cuts back to Negan, who's about to use yet another bullet before the trailer splashes in another title card, and then cuts back to Maggie with Elijah and a few others, possibly in Alexandria during a battle with the Reapers. The trailer then cuts to an old abandoned underground shop. We then get a creepy shot of Maggie wearing Alpha's mask. That thing really needs to be properly disinfected. The action comes to a halt with Maggie daring Negan to keep pushing her with a gun in his face. But are there any real stakes here? We doubt she'll end up killing him, although anything is possible. After one last fade to black and the logo card splashing in, we get a little retro throwback as the trailer cuts to a promotional video that looks like it was made using 1980s beta equipment. We're giving a revealing but low quality look into the actual community of the Commonwealth, filled with all kinds of red shirts. Finally, we see a popular character from the comics, Lance Hornsby, who was kind of the PR face of the community. And we can only wonder if the Commonwealth are going to be the same is in the comics or more sinister and dangerous instead of just classist. The trailer then cuts back to Eugene and the man with the mullet is looking scared with who appears to be possibly Ezekiel and Yumiko behind him before giving us a premiere date for the beginning of the end, August 22nd. And if you have AMC+, Plus, you can actually watch it a week early on August 15th. Each episode of Season 11A will be available a week early to AMC Plus subscribers, so get that dead in one more time, people, before it's all gone for good. The episode titles were recently released, and we do have to say they make the season sound very bleak and kind of depressing. The season premiere will be a two-parter titled Asheron, which is part of a Greek myth and references a river of pain and despair. Sounds promising. The rest of the titles are pretty straightforward. 1103 is Hunted, probably meaning Daryl. 1104 is called Rendition. Could this be Maggie's backstory during the time she was gone? 1105, Out of the Ashes, sounds like an uplifting title and might be about rebuilding the hilltop. 1106 is called On the Inside and might give us an inside look into the Commonwealth or Reapers. The title for episode 1107, Promises Broken, hints at a betrayal and could signify a rift in the survivors. The title of the season Season 11A finale, Four Blood, is a dark one that seems to promise lots of action. Will this bring an end to the Reaper's conflict? The Season 11A description is long, so we won't go through every single word, but it teases a food crisis amongst the communities, which threatens to cause what's left of the survivor's society to completely collapse. The description also calls the Commonwealth unforthcoming, so we can count on that storyline taking a while to unfold, probably not until Season 11B. The two-part premiere has also had a description release that starts with this. Returning to Alexandria from a critical food mission, the group realizes it isn't enough. Maggie proposes a new plan, potentially a suicide mission. Once on the road, a violent storm erupts, forcing them underground into a subway tunnel. As nerves fray and suspicions increase, chaos ensues. The terror is relentless as our people get a glimpse of what Maggie and her group endured prior to returning to Alexandria. Meanwhile, those captured by the strange soldiers are relocated to another undisclosed location. First of all, is that a description?
description or the entire plot of the episode. The big question is, what is Maggie's suicide mission? Is it to go to some sort of military base to get guns to beat the Reapers? Hopefully not, as that is the same exact storyline and plot Michonne had last season. The second episode description is also very informative. The group discovers a member did not make it to safety inside the subway car. Surrounded by walkers, going back out into the tunnel to search is a guaranteed death wish. All eyes are on Negan as the rule of survival shifts. It is no longer no man left behind. The motto now is, we keep going. Meanwhile, while Daryl is in his own intense, hellish situation, trying to find Dog and finding more than he expected. And Yumiko challenges the process at the Commonwealth Outpost, which threatens her future and that of Eugene, Ezekiel, and Princess. If all eyes are on Negan, it seems that Daryl may have been the one who disappeared, which could fit with this footage. Did they use Dog to lure him away? With only a few short weeks before the premiere airs, there may be another trailer, but there will definitely be at least two more sneak peeks released for the upcoming season during the two remaining episodes of Walking Dead Origins featuring Carol and Negan. The first two didn't reveal a lot of story info, but we imagine the last few might. What do you think? Is season 11 going to be a proper send-off, or will we get Game of Thrones level disappointments? Either way, we're sticking around to the bitter end, and we hope to see you there, whether it's creative, cringy, or creepy. Finally, let's talk about who we think will die in the first part of The Walking Dead's endgame. First up, Elijah. We think he used to be a Reaper, and they are hunting Maggie down because she helped him get away. Next up, all Alden. We at least believe he is the one bitten in this shot here, but maybe Negan saves his life and cuts off his arm. A savior saving a savior would be a cool throwback. Next, Magna. She doesn't seem to have a lot of places to go character-wise, and knowing Yumiko is gearing up for an important storyline makes Magna seem more expendable. Our next possible death is a big one, and we think it could be Father Gabriel. We believe he's crossed over too dark of a line and that Rosita is just too tough to die. A possible red shirt death is the actor C. Thomas Howell, who is only credited as Hilltop resident. The experienced actor came on as a friend of Michael Kudlitz and has been in a few episodes but does have the potential to have a big scene before biting the dust. Some people have speculated he might be one of the Reapers due to his IG profile, but digging into his past roles, it appears he played a serial killer called the Reaper on the series Criminal Mind, so probably just a funny coincidence. You set yourself apart from anybody we've ever dealt with. You're not just a famous serial killer, you're the Reaper. Finally, we think Negan will not survive until the end. We believe he may die saving Maggie or Herschel or both, or maybe just damn near everyone. He will prove that Carl was right, giving people a second chance is the way to go with a society, and that he's paid his penance and finally deserves to be with his beloved Lucille. What do you think? How many will die in these first eight episodes of season 11? Will anyone be left by the end? Thanks so much for watching our videos, everybody. As always, we're on the lookout for any new sneak peeks, promos, or insider info to help prove or disprove all the rumors and theories out there about our favorite show where regular people are scarier than zombies, The Walking Dead. Please let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Binge Rampage. Click the notifications bell for our channel so you can see our next video as soon as it comes out. And don't forget to subscribe. You know when people get so angry they say they see red? That shit is actually true. When this asshole comes at me, all I see is red. It's like I am looking at the world through blood.